everyone. I uh, thought I would take a minute to pop on here and show you how I do a pin stitch to start and finish a thread um, when I'm working over one. So one over one. One strand of floss with um, over one strand of fabric. This is a 25 count fabric I'm working on. Um, I've also been successful doing this on 28 count. Um, I would presume though that the higher the count, the harder this is going to be to do. Um, but certainly 25 count, um, no problem at all for me to do this pin stitch start and finish. So you, if, I don't know if you can see this little divot in my fabric right there. That's where I finished a thread from up here. I just brought the thread down and did a pin stitch right there to end it and it's snug as a bug. It's not going to come out. Um, and once I make an X over that, you will not see that little divot in the fabric and you also can't feel it from the front. It's very flush. It doesn't create any bump or any extra bulk. So I need to start a new thread. I'm just going to start this in a random spot. Normally, you know, I would start it, um, if I was going to finish making my X's going back this way, I would start my pin stitch like right here underneath. Um, if I was starting off a brand new section to start going this way, I would just do a pin stitch right there. Typically, my pin stitch to start um, acts, I do it diagonally when I start. And that's so that my pin stitch acts as the first leg of my X. So let's just start a, I'm going to do one in a random spot here. Let's just start one here. You can see on the fabric there are horizontal and vertical lines, right? I just pick a, um, a spot. It doesn't matter um, if the horizontal line or the vertical line is on top. It really doesn't matter. And what you're going to do is you're going to place your needle on the center of where the X would be and you're going to pierce the center of that fabric so that you're piercing the horizontal line and the vertical line of your fabric underneath. And I'm doing this one handed because I'm holding the camera with my other hand. You're going to pull your thread down through until there's a little tail sticking out and then you're going to come up for me I stitch bottom left to top right so I'm going to come up in the bottom left of my X okay I'm going to pull that little tail down out of the way there and I'm going to go right back down through the center of that square again piercing the center of the fabric now again, normally I'm doing this two-handed so I can hold that little tail that it doesn't accidentally get dragged through. But I'm just going to do this very easily with one hand for the moment. Bear with me here. There we go. Then I'm going to come up through the top right corner. Give a little tug. Move that strand again and down through the center once more. And when you pull your thread through, Here we go and pull it snug. The little tail is left sticking out on top and you can now cut that off flush to your fabric. So I'm just going to pause here for a second while I do that. So there you go. You can now see that my pin stitch is there and it's acting as the bottom leg. It goes from here to here. Now I'm going to come up through the bottom right 
and go down through my top left and there's my X perfectly good pin stitch I can tug and pull on that as much as I want that stitch is not coming out you can just continue on do your X's as you normally would Way you go okay so when I'm ready to finish off this thread, I will come back and show you how to finish. Okay, so now we're going to end with a pin stitch. Um, let's say you've got all the stitches done that you need to do of that color and you want to end it off. As you can see, um, you can't tell where I did the other pin stitch now. It's, you know, it looks no different than any of the other stitches that I made here. <clears throat> so the end with a pin stitch. I think my last, yeah, so my last stitch is right here, just above that needle. I like to bring my thread down, you know, a couple of stitches if I can, just so that there's a little bit of a drag on the back. And that will also get stitched over on the back when I add in the other stitches. So when I go to end with a pin stitch, I'm going to do the same thing, but in the reverse. Um, and I'm going to do it, I like to do it on a strand that is vertical, that's up and down. And I do my pin stitch vertical when I end rather than diagonal. So I'm going to use this strand right here to the right of where my needle is you're going to come up through the bottom of that strand go through the bottom of that vertical strand there whoops again i'm doing this one-handed through the camera there you go so i've split instead of coming up in one of the corners I've split this thread, this vertical thread right here, underneath the horizontal thread. Okay, so I'm going to pull my floss up through there. So you can see I didn't come up from the, from either of the corners of the stitch. I came up in the center and split that piece of fabric. Now I'm going to go down in the center splitting both the horizontal and the vertical line just like we did when we started and you're going to pull that down and pull it snug so it just creates a little divot there now i'm going to come up through the top of that vertical line again in between the two holes so i'm splitting the strand okay right there and I'm again going to go down through the center and now because I don't want to flip my work over to cut off the thread I'll just come back up through that first hole I made in the middle oops when I can get to it there it is pull that up pull that snug and now I'm going to snip my strand off. So just give me one second. Okay, there we go. I've cut off the strand. You can't feel where that pin stitch is. You can barely see it. Like I'm zoomed right in here. And you can just barely see the little peak of floss there. But I can come up and do a totally another. These holes are not obscured because I didn't go through my actual stitch holes. I went through this vertical strand. So because of that, I can now make another X right over this. And you can't feel it, you can't see it. I've done, I've ended with pin stitches in several places on my fabric. You can't see it. So a lot of times, you know, this is a good example. You start with a color, in a random spot there's no space around to run your thread through so you start with a pin stitch 
I probably stitch that one, then stitch these, then stitch down here, move my way over, and then probably ended with a pin stitch, I don't know, under here somewhere. Again, um, you can't you can't really tell. There's a pin stitch end right there. There's another pin stitch end right there, which I probably ended from here. I probably just brought my strand down a little further than I normally do. Yep. So there you go. That's how you start and end over one when you're doing one over one on full coverage. I hope that helps. I don't know how clear it is because again, I'm holding the camera with one hand and trying to stitch with the other. But I hope that helps out some people. Have a great day. Happy stitching. And um, we'll see you again soon.